Thank you very much, Joan. And I have enjoyed the conference so far and congratulations. Very good points raised and uh, some optimism as well in the discussion where I would also like to uh, kind of emphasize uh, my uh, short um, uh, presentation. Now, obviously we are dealing with um, those new uncertainties and uh, what the minister said about what the big picture is and how the region actually sees this big picture is a very interesting question because what the region sees right now is a change of leadership in the United States, more trust than before, but at the same time there is this kind of uh, friction as to what the priorities are, especially vis-a-vis -vis China. What is the post-Merkel context as well in Germany? How that will affect uh, Europe's uh, strategic autonomy? How France and Germany are going to combine their two different or relatively different visions in terms of uh, security and defense in Europe. China, which is begin beginning to overtake Russia in the region, we are seeing especially with some countries there, like Serbia, and then uh, China wanting to become a real uh, strategic investor in the long term, uh, compared with Russia, that is more of a spoiler, um, as we have seen and we are seeing. I would also put in the discussion also the Hungarian illiberalism, the Hungarian infection, if I can put it that way, because this is a competing kind of um, uh, paradigm within the EU, and we are seeing more and more the presence of Hungary and the illiberalism that it professes in the region of the Balkans. The pandemic um, has uh, given some successes and some failures in the management. I mean, there is diversity. But what we have witnessed as well is this kind of misinformation and the conspiracy theories that are very prevalent uh, in, in the region. And um, uh, finally, we are seeing as another uncertainty the fact that NATO is receiving contestation uh, either from France in terms of uh, how effective it can be or from, you know, from countries like Turkey when it seeks alliances with Russia. But enough with those kind of uncertainties and uh, challenges I think that uh, we are seeing also some optimistic uh, 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 scenes here. Um, first of all, let me say before that, that in the field of regional collective and security defense, when we look at the region, we are seeing a space which is fragmented. I mean, we are seeing a variable geometry. Uh, countries are participating differently uh, in NATO, uh, in the European Union initiatives, and so on and so forth. But let's see what we've got so far, which I think is much more important. First of all, the US and the EU, they do not differ in their um, uh, goals in the Western Balkans. They both want to avert crisis, they're in favor of normalization agreement, transatlantic cooperation, uh, this, uh, the, the functionality of Bosnia, and support liberal democracies as well. NATO has been very effective in gathering support from all the Western Balkan countries. In understanding also geopolitics there and the hybridity of threats, I think that's very important. And also, of course, the new memberships that are very encouraging and how the modernization, obviously, and the engagement of these countries in various operations has been uh, very significant. China's influence, on the other hand, may not be as big as it seems. I mean, you know, the economic miracle has its limits. Growth rates are slowing down. And there are definitely issues within the Belt and Road initiatives that are being challenged by Central and Eastern European countries. I mean, at the end of the day, the lack of transparency with the pandemic, that monolithic nature of the communist leadership there, and the fear of uh, that um, dependency on, on China are not particularly appealing to these countries either. We've seen in the recent elections in the country some uh, enlightened uh, leadership as well that have uh, different perspectives. In fact, we witnessed in your discussion, John, this morning, uh, some of these views that were very optimistic. And uh, then we also see that uh, these countries as well, they are participating willingly in operations in NATO uh, and also receiving refugees from Afghanistan offering uh, bases. Overall, the security picture is not that bad in the sense that there are pockets of, in, of, of instability, pockets of insecurity, but the wider picture is uh, uh, okay. But then I will go uh, back to uh, Dimitar Bechev's um, uh, earlier argument and Ian's as well now, where they both say that there is this risk of complacency, 
the risk of the sustainability of the status quo as it is, not too threatening, and you know, it can go over for uh, whatever. So there is where the role of the European Union really becomes very, very important. Because if we look at the comparison with NATO, there is definitely the credibility of NATO in the region rising, but the credibility of the European Union actually going uh, you know, down. And in the field of uh, security and defense, obviously the European Union is not a defense mechanism, and it has done uh, some things in terms of its civilian operations as well, uh, but also a good crisis, crisis diffuser. I mean, you know, EU, its best kind of hand is in negotiations. We've seen that recently with Serbia and Kosovo. We've seen that before. We're going to continue seeing this. When crisis and EU comes in there, uh, they can be effective. And also, technically, they are working with NATO, the United States, in terms of various common goals that um, there are for the region. And I would like to say here that defense can be actually an area of opportunity for the region. I mean, we saw in Bosnia, for instance, if you remember, that was one of the successes, actually, to have a common military uh, in uh, Bosnia's uh, otherwise a very fragmented and dysfunctional state. So it, it is important uh, to use this uh, sector. And overall, what I would like to say is that the EU, obviously, because at the end of the day, it goes back to the European Union, whether there is a secure region, is whether the EU is going to keep what kind of promises and how it is going to um, to keep them. Um, and, you know, from what we see now, and I think it's been stated by everybody, the commitment is actually suspicious to me. I mean, some countries, they want it half-heartedly. Other countries, they want it for the wrong reasons, and there are other countries that don't want it. And then it becomes like a chicken and egg situation. The EU doesn't take the countries in because of the problems that they have, and the problems become bigger because of the fact that the EU is not committed enough. So uh, I think that um, I like the double analogy, the, the, the double vaccination analogy that I, uh, that I heard earlier in terms of boosting after NATO membership, the EU membership. But as a kind of final comment, if I may, is that what we are seeing is actually an environment of co-competition. Um, there is a competition, but cooperation at the same time. It's more about transactionalism in the relations between uh, the Western Balkan countries themselves, but also in the relationships that they have with the rest of the world. There is that notion of transactions, not of high principles and vision. And there again, you know, we are in this kind of danger zone as to how to proceed uh, with, with the region. Um, with that, I would like to thank you, Joan.